Um, when me and Rose were just getting started, and we went to Chattanooga, right? Yeah. We were doing, and this was Mike's show, Mike Sick. Yeah, yeah. And so we did his show at some bar they had, I don't know, some, somewhere in downtown Chattanooga. Yeah. It was the hottest thing going on in the city that night. And, you know, maybe it might have been 200 people in there and Wally Sparks was there. He was the D- Wally Sparks and DJ Knotts, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So they were there and, um, you know, at that time I was making the beat videos and stuff. And Wally Sparks uh, was like, yo, man, I seen you on Instagram. It was a place I noticed. Okay, I said, okay, so outside of a major city like Atlanta, mm-hmm. backstage... People really, they're not as Hollywood as you would think. Okay. They have time to talk because they're not encountering all the Hollywood stuff. Okay. In the crowd, they're really engaged because there's nothing else going on. They're not seeing celebrities all the time. And so this is an event for them. Mm-hmm. Well, being at the show here in Atlanta, I was like, man, the DJ was like, you know, warming the crowd up. Y'all make some noise, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, I'm like, he was playing some jamming music, mm-hmm. but nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared. And then they came out and they, and, and they came out to the uh, stage and, you know, you see Carlos and DC and Chico and them come out and I'm like, hey, ain't nobody cheering. Like, I'm, I'm cheering. Like, I, I'm yeah. a fan of the show. Right. But everybody's like, yeah. You hear it. Calm down pretty decently. Yeah, y'all make some noise. Atlanta, come on, we in here. Yeah. You know? They home. So it's like, but nobody's cheering. Jesus. Is it like that when you go to Falcons games? I know it's like that when you go to the Hawks game. But it's not like that when you go to see uh, Atlanta United. Interesting. A Atlanta United game, first off, it's culture to stand up the entire game. Man. And chant the entire game. And then not only that, I've been to um, so a couple of, of these like YouTube, these white guys, they'd be like YouTube rappers. YouTube sensation, they have a channel and then they'll just dabble in rap. Mm-hmm. And so they'll have this whole like, um, I don't know, like frat boy slash jackass, you know, vibe. And they'll bring attract that crowd in, inside like an aisle five. Mm-hmm. And there'll be moshing going on in there. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but the Atlanta stare is a thing, huh? That's true. I've been to several concerts, and it's like, and I've noticed that. So that's why I say I notice when we did Chattanooga, we did Chattanooga twice, and I big difference. Mm-hmm. Warm welcome. When you get here, people are used to that celebrity thing. Really. And maybe it's a black people thing. I don't know. Maybe that's why when pop acts come here, they go to that Gwinnett Arena out uh-huh. there instead of coming into the city. Yeah. And then, you know, they have a new arena down here in College Park they've been building for yeah. concerts and stuff. I don't know how that's going to fare. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I know it's a thing. Maybe it's a lot of pressure to be cool. And so you can't, like, do the most. Like, you can't, you know... Uh, Man, I've seen some people really fanboy, fangirl out for, for a celebrity and, and get really excited and stage dive and throw water and just, like, make the whole make the whole evening an event. Matter of fact, I was at a show at Smith's, and the and the energy, the crowd and the energy that those bands brought out there, people were, it was, it was ban- bananas in there. And they are, like, underground, you know, uh, bands. But... It was it was a mixed crowd and it and it, it wasn't a lot of bros in there. But I just I I'm just really trying to figure it out. Is it just a cool thing? Is I don't want to look lame and be all excited, you know, or No, okay. Let me I'll say this about the city. Okay. I because you brought up Smith's. Okay. Um live instrumentation does a lot for engagement. Engage- because there's because oh, yeah. okay. if you do a track, it's like okay. Okay. I got you. That means you, the person, have to do everything yes. to keep people with, you know, keep their eyes on you. Mm-hmm. But when you have the band going on, it sounds different. It's like, oh, okay, this is bigger. Yeah. Um, and so you have that. The expectation is to for the band to give a show. 
and you expect that. When you get mesmerized by it, your energy is great. So when I, I went to the tabernacle to see the roots, I'm a fan of the roots, man. So I, outside of my excitement of fanning out, other people were jamming because the band was having fun on stage and dancing and moving. Everybody was moving. Uh, so like um, with Nick, well, she went back down the hallway and making house music. Those people come, they they go to the club and expect to dance. They That's come to dance. right. Yeah. That's what it's for. They're not standing around. Mm -hmm. You know, they have that thing where they throw the baby powder on the floor so they can slip around and, and actually dance. So people be breaking and all that stuff oh and and whatever they're doing and all man, everything. Yeah. That's not my cup of tea, but I've seen it. Yeah. You know, and um I think it's just the expectation of what you bring. Um. So when outside people come to the city, you they have to they have to put so much energy into what they do just to draw the opinion out of the Atlanta crowd. Uh huh. That's okay, what I think. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a good point. But if let, let's say you're doing some raps, when's the well, all right? Let me ask you this: When's what was the last engaging rap show that you saw that band or no band outside of uh, the Roots outside of the Roots band or no band that was engaging? Um, uh, man, it's been a minute since okay. I've been to a rap show. So, so the roots was kind of like the last. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to think. No, yeah, no. Anderson Pack, Anderson Pack was lit. I yeah. seen Anderson Pack twice in Atlanta. Yeah. But the last, the last concert I went to see was Anderson Pack. It's been a minute. So that was that was a year ago in February. Okay. But he was lit at the Coca Cola Roxy by the stadium, Brave yeah. Stadium. Like it was crazy. That's awesome. It was crazy. It was sold out. Um, but it was a band. Yeah. He had a band. And even when I saw him the first time at One Music Fest, um, he had the band. Yeah. And so, you know, um. And doesn't your your vibe attract your tribe anyway? So if you're yeah, you know if if you have that high energy music, people know what they're coming for. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's tough. I I can imagine that being real tough. You getting up there, even though you're getting paid and you're getting good money, and but it's just no energy back. It's like me. It's like like, like the equivalent of me doing when I used to do my Facebook live show last season. Yeah, yeah. When no, when people would come in and not say anything in the stream, and just be there. It would be the worst. So I that's knew. Hilarious. I knew. I said I gotta go to YouTube and Instagram because that's where the engagement is. Uh huh. So I gotta go there. You know, like I could get on. I could get on Facebook right now, and we'd just be talking. But uh, it's not the right time for Facebook anyway. But. Um, but I knew I noticed that it's it's the engagement with the audience and what you have to do to make sure that you fine tune that engagement. Every region is different, but it's it's a it's a science project. It legit is. Yeah, man. Yeah, because oh, no cap, man. The one of the artists who came up, I saw a lot of artists come up, a lot of openers, but one of them, his disposition was more cheerful. Right, mm -hmm. and his comfort on that stage was obvious, and the way he came out with his disposition and this comfort, and immediately start talking to the crowd, it was like everyone shifted their energy to match his. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really a match, you know. But with the DC, what you were saying about the '85 show, right? Mm -hmm. And when you got the host on there, they already come with a lot of energy. I don't know why, you know. I seen when I saw Schoolboy Q here, yeah. it was different. It was just like you said. Okay. Because he engaged with the crowd. Yeah. And he actually cracked jokes at people in the crowd on the front row. Like, That's man, I'm, I'm tired. First of all, hey, everybody break. Because uh, he was like, I got to sit down, man. He was fat. Like, yeah. man, I'm tired, man. It's, whew. He was like, oh, look at you. He was, uh, he was cracking jokes while he was resting. You know, for a good fifteen minutes, and yeah. but that brought the engagement with the crowd right. to let them know that hey, I'm just a real person. Yeah, yeah. You know, but 
tear down them walls and stuff. Yeah, this it's just like breaking the ice. And once you once you can do that to make people chill out a little bit, you can get into the show and people people ready to do the thing. Yeah, you're right. I dig that. So man, that's some so that's some advice, I guess, you know, for artists, go, you gotta make the make come make the crowd feel comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable, they can see it, they can feel it. Mm-hmm. Make them feel comfortable. You're just gonna have a better show. Yeah, 